Good evening, everyone. A very warm welcome to all of you. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Tanuja. I head the operations of Pick a Book Global. Uh, so about Pick a Book, Pick a Book is a global organization for readers dedicated to nurture the habit of reading and enhancing social interactions. And that's why all of us are here today to welcome our special guest. Uh, Pick a Book is the thriving community of 5,000 plus readers. And presently we are in India, Sri Lanka, UAE, UK, and Singapore. We have a small video for you. Can we, can we quickly play that, uh, Raji, for our audience today? Um, positive white people here who love reading. Inspiring and getting inspired. Knowledge sharing. Spreading positivity. Public speaking. Think a Thank you. So also about the next uh, organizer, about Parent Thrive. Parent Thrive is a beautiful parenting community, a place where parents come together to share knowledge, gain insights, and support one another on the incredible journey of raising kids. Here, we aim to create a nurturing environment where every parent can thrive by pooling our collective wisdom, discussing parenting techniques, and providing support. Can we play the video, please? Beautiful, isn't it? So going ahead, we would also like to thank our sponsors, Barista, our event sponsors in Colombo. Uh, they offered to provide 50 free coupons to the first 50 attendees for this session. These coupons will be sent to you based on your registration through Zoom. And uh, it's only for it's only applicable in Sri Lanka, in Colombo. Mm. However, I'm sure we'll have something exciting coming soon in other pickup book countries too. So yeah, thank you, Barista. And so now the wait is finally over. I would love to introduce our, and welcome our special guest for the evening, Janki Sabesh. She writes, performs, and lives through stories. Her distinctive and authentic style of blending narration, music, and movement is loved by children, youngsters, corporate professionals, teachers, and everyone alike. Janki has authored the Jungle Storytelling Festival, a picture book for children published by Tulika Books and co-authored her second picture book titled Parties Rasam with her daughter, Vani Sabesh. Published by Karadi Tales, Parties Rasam also won the 2023 National Jarul Book Award that recognizes Indian picture books. Wow. 
wearing a variety of hats and totally in love with it. That's quite evident uh, through her radiance of an accomplished actor of over 30 films in Tamil and a couple in Telugu and Malayalam, voiceover and theater artist, experienced marketer, facilitator, professional speaker, and is the chief fun officer at her own storytelling initiative, <coughs> Golpo Tales. Golpo meaning story in Bengali. How beautiful is that? She believes a story told from the heart will always win more hearts, indeed. So, uh, she also believes in bringing people together through intimate storytelling experiences around personal tales, food, music, and nostalgia. So thank you all, and let us wait no further and extend our warmest welcome to our special guest and master storyteller, Janki Sabesh. Welcome, and the stage is all yours. Rather, thank the screen you. is all yours. Thank you so much. And uh, before you sign off and... Uh, uh, you know, uh, I need your video to be on and I'd like Yashwan's video to be on because for the next few minutes after that, you can, uh, I mean, it, it'd be no, nice not. to, you know, talk to uh, people here because I know there are almost uh, more than 40 people here. So thank you so much. I don't know which part of uh, uh, the world you are uh, tuning in from, but thank you, Parent Thrive. Thank you, Pick a Book. And a special shout out to Raghu. I don't know if he's there, but uh, for having met me in Chennai, made me understand what Pick a Book uh, does. And uh, for Tanuja to diligently follow up and you know say, why don't you do this? So <laughs> I know I can't see many of you, but I'd like wherever you are, whichever part of the world you are, I'd like you to just close your eyes. Close your eyes. Just listen to what I am going to say. So once upon a time, I, I was walking, or rather I was walking with a few of my friends. We are, close your eyes, Yashwin. Tanuja, I want all of you. I know I can't see you, but I need all of you to close your eyes. Let's be honest. Yes, let's be honest. I mean, you know that you've opened your eyes or closed your eyes, okay? So, we are in this resort, a beautiful resort in Kurg, somewhere in Karnataka. And we are taken in by the beauty and the bounty of nature. We decide, the five of us, we decide that we will go on a trek, maybe to a coffee plantation. The guide said, Madam, I will help you. But we said, no, no, no. We have Google Maps. We have everything. You don't have to come. And so the next day, early in the morning, even before sunrise, we hear some, maybe the last few of the cricket sounds just diminishing. Oh, oh. We don't know what sounds they are. The door opens of our cottage and we get out. We say, shh, don't make any sounds. We don't want to wake up the other guests. And the five of us start walking. We stamp on leaves. It goes, shh, 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 shh. Oh, yeah, just leaves, yeah. It's okay, it's okay. And then we start walking. We have our phone torches. So we put the light and we try because it's still, the dawn is still about to break. And as we walk, as, we, as the light shines through the path that we need to walk, we slowly, slowly walk. And as we walk, the sun is about to shed its light on us, but it's still dawn break. And suddenly, <laughs> oh, oh. there are so many birds and there is flapping of the wings and we hear so many sounds. And as we go, we don't realize we've all been separated. We were so taken in by the beautiful surroundings, by nature. And there is this water gushing in, maybe a stream. Maybe there's a stream, maybe there is something else. And suddenly I look around, I look to my left, I look to my right and there's no one. Where are my friends? Slowly open your eyes. Slowly open your eyes. 
So did Tanuja and Yashwant, you'll have to answer. Or all the others can answer on there. Did you feel the story? Did you feel that you were in the, the middle of a also. forest? Yeah, you smelt your coffee. Yashwant yes. promised me one. Well, I'll wait for it. But did you, did, you, did you notice? Because right now, you had closed your eyes. You were not hopefully looking at your phones. Any of the guests who are there, you can fill in your chat boxes. Please write in the chat box what you felt. Did you feel immersive inside the story? I guess I will take Yashwant and uh, nature at its best. Yes, nature at its best, but yes. All right, so I am getting, thank you. Thank you for, thank you for telling me honestly that you closed your eyes. Now, imagine that this was a story you were narrating to your little one without your phone, without any other distraction, totally into the story. Maybe with a book, maybe without a book. This is what is storytelling all about. You don't have to be an actor. You don't have to be a dramatist. You just have to immerse yourself in storytelling. This is what I call storytelling. And this is what, this is how I used to narrate story to my daughter many, many, many years ago. I mean, she's 30 now, so you can imagine. But I was lucky. I was lucky because there was no social media. There was not even a cell phone. It was just a pager. That's all. And we had the landline. So maybe I was lucky. But you know what? I think you people are even more lucky because you are in a state of, you know, you have so many things to share with your children. You have podcasts. You have, you have of course, you have, something called a cell phone, but, 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 you know what we are losing out on is the physical connect that we have with our children because many a times we are also, we also want to know what is happening in the social media. We also wanted to know, we also want to know what else is happening, you know. I mean, I understand all that, but you know, parents, if only you spend five minutes, start with five, 10, 15, 20 minutes with your children just reading a book or narrating him a story or creating a story, he or she is going to be so thrilled because you can thank me later because they will remember the stories. How many of you remember, raise your hand, how many of you remember the Thirsty Crow story? How many of you remember the Thirsty Crow story? Come on. Okay. Only two people? Out of 57 only. Ah, okay, 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 okay. They've all raised their hands. Yes, all right. All of you remember the Thirsty Crow story. Now, I think most of you will agree that the Thirsty Crow story was not shown to us in a book form. It was narrated. It could have been your grandfather or grandmother, great, great grandfather some elders in your family and that has gone from generation to generation to generation so you see stories have this beautiful magical way of traveling from nowhere to our homes to right now where i'm sitting there are multiple stories around you but for that you have to pause you have to imagine yourself in that setting and when you read out to your child, you have to imagine yourself inside the story. So there are three ways of sharing stories. I mean, you do tell stories, right? You, you tell stories to your children. And I'm sure most of them, how many of you read to your children? Come on. How many of you, okay, let me ask you uh, the first question. How many of you, Tell stories to your children. Okay, there are a lot of people who raise their hands. Silashika, Siva Balasundaram plus nine. Okay, there are many, many people who are excellent. What time? When do you share stories? Do you share stories at bedtime? How many of you share stories at bedtime? Ah, oh, there. Somebody called Gigi. Yes, bedtime. How many more? 
bed time or evening snack time oh that's a nice nice time to share stories meal time nice but how many of you share stories only during bed time i have a small problem in that you know what problem because by the time by the time you hit the bed right your child hits the bed you're also tired you're also tired and you are like oh what's it all at time you're already on that frame so chances are that you know you might not be in the zone so if you take your more alert time and say i am going to be sharing a story at this particular time and if you can make it like a nice rhythm saying that you know i'm going to share a story at this time yes parents are working there's a lot of pressure there's a lot of stress at work i understand all of that but if you take time out and it can be like somebody said while the child is snacking you just take the book and you just sit now when your child is really really young when he or she they don't know how to read you know the words they don't know the alphabets doesn't mind just share them with them picture books now i'd like to share a, i'd like to show you a book this is called ammachi's glasses and this is a wordless book meaning there are no words okay and this is by an award winning author called priya kurian uh, published by tulika so ammachi in uh, kerala means grandmother and it's all about her if you can see uh, just let me know thumbs up or something that we are able to see this tanuja you are able to see this right okay i presume that all of you can see it and uh, you can you can imagine that this is the story of ammachi who loses her glasses it's called kannada not kannadi which we say in tamil kannada in malayalam and everything breaks i mean she creates havoc because instead of uh, washing her clothes she washes and hangs the house cat upside down i mean it's hilarious okay and if you notice there is a crow in uh, in every page there is i mean every single page has a crow like she's she does, she can't see so she's actually eating a, a um you know whatever an insect in her porridge or whatever and if you see if you notice the crow is still here so maybe the crow has got to do so your child when you're reading this see when you're reading this you're going to be only talking about the pictures right because there is no text can you imagine the the amount of surprise curiosity everything on your child's face he's like but what happens after this where did ammachi's kannada go and of course we found i'm giving away the story the kannada is actually in the crow's nest it's the crow that's uh, you know taken so when i perform the story it's available on my youtube channel um i perform it in such a way that i become the ammachi and it is hilarious because it's about i mean how can ammachi you know fit into her granddaughter's clothes but that's what she does so i i and i then break out into a song called ammachi de kannada ye bade poi ammachi de kannada aare kondu poi ammachi de kannada tirichu taramo ammachi de kannada kaaka kondu poi so it suddenly the child is now introduced to a language that he does not know that she does not know it's malayalam but the child is also getting used to the sounds so you realize there are no words you you share all all you just if if i just share this picture with you you will say there is an ammachi once upon a time there was an ammachi was sleeping then she gets up and how we get up and then she gets down her bed but then she's searching for something hey she's she's below the uh, cuddle she's below the cot what is she searching for and then you see that ammachi is searching for kannada ma it's not kannada 
Kannadi. That's how your child will say. But you will say, this is Ammachi's glasses. That means it's happening in a different state. What is a state? State means just like we stay in Chennai, you know, or if you say just like we stay in Colombo, this is a different country. It's called India. And in India, there is one state called Kerala where they speak Malayalam. You know, they also have Idiapam and all, just like we have Idiapam here. Oh, see how you are able to spend at least five minutes on just the language. That's all. You immerse yourself. But in between, if you say, well, one minute, Kana, I have a work call, you're disrupting the flow. So you need to immerse yourself in the story. So I was talking to you about sounds. The child is learning. You will say, nya, 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 kuchi, papa. this is how you uh, all, uh, you know, um, uh, fondle your children and you start making all kinds of gurgly sounds more than the child you make sounds. How are you doing? All kinds of sounds. The child is listening. This is how he makes sense. She makes sense of the world around her. And so, if you start with a, a picture book, which is a wordless picture book, then sky is the limit. You can have this Ammachi in Colombo. This Ammachi can be in Colombo and whatever you call your uh, grandmother, you can call. Uh, what do you call your grandmother? Somebody can put it in the chat box. What do you call a grandmother in uh, Ajji? Ah, nice. Ajji, Amma, Bibi. Wow. It could be Nani, Dadi. Yeah, so any, any. She could be anybody. So she might not be wearing the same clothes as um, Nani or Dadi, but that's okay. Children, Dadi sa, oh wow, Badi Mamma, nice. So you, can you imagine that you have spent at least, by the end of it, you will realize that a book that you maybe you thought you could finish in 15 minutes, you would have spent half an hour because the child is excited. He or she wants to know more. And remember, don't turn the page in a hurry. Don't turn the page in a hurry because they'll be interested to see the entire. I'll show you the uh, particular. Uh, okay. So the child, she trips. She trips on the dog. And there is a mother who is getting some, maybe a cup and saucer. So they are now slowly understanding this is a cup. This is a saucer. There is a clock. Then there is maybe, now what is this? We also have photo. We have photo of somebody. They are able to relate to their world and the world. And we are still on maybe page two or three of the picture book. So that's how a child's memory, a child's sounds, language, all of these start getting addressed without you making a very uh, conscious effort. That's why this particular program is called Enhanced Parenting. I mean, how can anybody teach parenting? It just comes naturally, right? You can't teach anybody parenting. Nobody taught me how to parent my daughter. Whatever my learnings are, I'm sharing it with you. I have, I have a session coming up tomorrow morning with lots of kuti kuti children and I'm going to be performing stories and I'm going to be learning so much because suddenly when I sing something, they might say, no, we'd like it to be like this. So you learn. Never ever tell a child that he or she is wrong when you tell a story because you know what stories do? Stories takes them to a beautiful space where sky is the limit for their imagination. So we come back to the three types of storytelling that I'm talking about today. Tell a story, reading a story. So we just saw telling a story because even though you have a book, you're still telling a story, okay? Because there are no words. But if I take a book like this, it's called Gajapati Kulapati. I don't know how many of you know about this because I know a lot of you are from Colombo. But I'm sure many of you have. It's one of the most favorite, um, desirable, affectionate elephant. And he's very, very popular in India. He's popular in all states. 
His name is Gajapati Kulapati and he is a, a very gentle and kind elephant. Now, this picture book has words, okay? So, it goes, um, Gajapati, Gajapati Kulapati was a big elephant. Gajapati Kulapati was a gentle elephant. So, when you read, if you say, Gajapati Kulapati was a big elephant, Gajapati Kulapati was a gentle elephant. This is not how you read to a child. You'll have to feel the story. You'll have to feel the words. So, if you say, Gajapati Kulapati was a big elephant. So, the child understands big is something that is huge. So, it's larger than him. He will say, bigger than me, bigger than you, bigger than Ajji, bigger than Amama. Because he's trying to figure out what big means. And then, Gajapati Kulapati was a gentle elephant. Gentle means what? Gentle means you have to explain. In whatever way you, your child understands, you have to explain what it, who is a gentle elephant. Now, let me perform the story for you. And then we'll talk about... So, uh, uh, when you're reading the story... Okay, let me read one more page. One night, it rained and Gajapati Kulapati got wet. Gajapati Kulapati caught a cold. Small noses catch small colds. Big noses catch big colds. Gajapati Kulapati had a big nose and he got a big cold. When the banana seller... Okay, now I'm going to perform it for you. So once... Okay, somebody is asking for the link and details of tomorrow. No, tomorrow's session is offline and it's happening in Chennai uh, in a place called Utopia. So sorry, it's not an online session. Okay. Once upon a time, there was this kind and gentle elephant called Gajapati Kulapati. Gaja, 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 Gajapati. Kula, 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 Kulapati. Gaja, 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 Gajapati. Kula, 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 Kulapati. Bum, 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 Gajapati. Bum, 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 Kulapati. Bum 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 gajapati. Bum 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 kulapati. Gaja 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 gajapati. Kula 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 kulapati. And everybody were his friends. The postman uncle, then the banana seller. They sing banana 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 yell a key. Poom barma ma ma ma. You want banana ma ma? Please come ma. I have banana. The flower seller ma. She was also a very dear friend. She said, Po, ma, 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 pool jaye kya? Po, po, po. I have got slide also, ma. Please, ma, take ma white pool, roja po. All kinds of po, 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 po. And then there was this cow. Everybody, they all loved Gajapati Kulapati because he was kind, he was gentle. And, you know, the milkman. He also loved. And the children, hey, they used to swing on Gajapati Kulapati's trunk. And they used to go from left to right, left to right. And then there was this old lady who loved Gajapati, who would always inquire about his health and well-being. I said, Gajapati Kulapati, how are you doing, ma? I'm well. Hey, everything is okay. And Gajapati Gulapati, in his way, would say, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But one day, what happened? There was these dark clouds hovering around. And then there was this thunder. And suddenly, there was rain. Lot of rain. And everybody, he ran to get into some kind of a shelter. The banana seller went under his cart. The postman went inside. A shop. The party amma, the old lady, wasn't even there. Maybe she was in her house. The flower seller, she also got into one of the shops. But what happened to Gajapati Kulapati? He didn't have a home. So he got wet. And once the rain stopped, everybody looked around. The banana seller looked up, looked left, looked right, and he said, ha, Now I can remove the cover from my bananas and as he removed the cover and all water was drained off he looked at Gajapati Kulapati and he said, Gajapati Kulapati do you want a banana? 
And Kachapati Gulapati said, ha, 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 Achu! In that big Achu, the banana seller who had bananas, the bananas went up and landed on the postman going potak. Potak! And the postman fell on the cow and the cow went and he ran away. And Kachapati Kulapati was so upset. He said, these are my friends and look at what one big sneeze Hachu has done. And he went, he went and went to sulk away somewhere. And once Nanima, that old lady came and she said, what happened? Bananas were all over the road and the banana seller was sitting like this. The postman was like, oh, I fell down. She said, what happened? And they explained. She said, poor Gajapati Kulapati. All of us had shelter. He doesn't have shelter. Let us don't build a home for him. And so all of them came and they decided, including the children, they all decided to build a home. And very soon, there was a big, big, big house made for, of course, made out of bamboo and hay. And of course, no doors, no windows, but definitely a roof over. And they all showed Gajapati Kulapati, this is your new home. And Gajapati Kulapati nodded in excitement. Gaja, 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 Gajapati, Kula, 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 Kulapati. Bum 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 gajapati, bum 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 kulapati, hachu hachu gajapati, hachu hachu kulapati, gaja 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 gajapati, kula 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 kulapati, and that's how since then there have been hachi hachu hachi, but never a ha 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 hachu. So. That was Gajapati Kulapati. Now, if I were to read the story to my child, it would not take more than five minutes, maximum seven minutes. But if I were to spend a lot of time in every page, right? Every page, then you can you can say, oh, he ran. And look at the Look at the postman running. Everybody is running and see. You can make all those sounds and you'll say, how do I make a sound for uh, a banana seller? Run! There is this big hachu. Use your imagination. All of us are born storytellers. I perform, but you might be performing at home for your children. That is the, that is the huge difference. Okay? So when you read the story, if you put in emotions, if you put in so many different sounds, the language, if you put yourself inside the story, I think it's one of the most beautiful way to spend, I don't know, maybe hours sometimes. Somebody had written that uh, uh, I think they share stories while traveling. That's the most beautiful way. Whenever we used to travel, my daughter would first pack her books saying, you know, she, you know how children like to have their own little box, their suitcase. First thing she would do is go and get her own box. And first things first, she would put her uh, books in it because for her books meant everything. So you can ask me, so was she always, there are so many mothers who come to me, you know, parents who come to me and say, but my child is not uh, um, reading at all. It's called monkey see, monkey do. If you read, the child will also read because the child between zero to five years, they just are, you are the role models, okay? The teachers come in later. You are their role models. So if you do something, so many a times you will see uh, girls going and, you know, trying to wear lipstick, boys trying to, you know, shave beards, you know, whatever you do, whatever they've been watching you because they are like sponge. They will absorb every single thing. And the third one is, see, the first one is telling stories. Second one is reading stories, reading stories with them. The third one is creating stories. Now, how do you create stories? You create stories with everyday objects that are around in your house, that are lying around. So first of all, you throw books all over. 
and when you start picking up books the child will naturally pick up their books they might not understand how to read the words they they don't even know that's okay let them start looking at the colors they're making sense of this is white <coughs> sorry this is white this is red this is yellow how do they even find out these are the colors sometimes they might hear the sound of a siren an ambulance then they ask what is that sound you will have to explain then they'll say what do you mean by ambulance why do people have to go to hospital see they are curious they are continuously it's you know they they understand their emotions are still starting they throw a tantrum maybe they are hungry maybe at that time if you share a story maybe you say that can we read a book together is always a nice thing instead of just showing them a screen and say okay watch you can you can definitely show them screen time i'm not against screen time but keep that keep that with a you know there has to be a limit to how much they watch because they have to feel the book they have to understand listening skills all this comes through storytelling and there are elders in your home take advantage of them take advantage of their presence uncles aunts grandfathers grandmothers they are a treasure trove of stories so here i'd like to share something that uh, my mother in law uh, she is 94 now she is called kake in our house kake means crow so uh, one day i asked her why are you called kake uh, so amrit is the name of her youngest grandson so she tells me and i'm going to share this with you okay Okay, why did Amrit uh, love Kaka story? Because when he was very young, <coughs> uh, some six ten months old, uh, I used to tell him the story of that crow, uh, Kaka, uh, Kaka, who is very clever uh, of taking that one bird eye uh, and went up to the tree. Okay, so the jackal came. Uh, Kaka, Kaka, ah. you are singing so nicely. Ah. Please sing one song for me. Ah. So Kaka, not realizing that, ah. he he opened his mouth. So the bird eye came down. <laughs> Jackal took it and ran. From that day, ah. he used to call me Kaka. Okay. So, so uh, can you sing that song? Kaka, Kaka, good every day. Kootine gat. ൊരു കുഞ്ഞുണ്ടോ കുഞ്ഞേ കുഞ്ഞേ നീ തരുമോ നിന്നുടെ കയ്യില നെയ്യപ്പം ഇല്ലാ തരില നെയ്യപ്പം അയ്യോ കാക്കെ പറ്റിച്ചോ ഇമാജൻ ഇമാജൻ ദി എക്സ്പ്രസ് റൈറ്റ് there is such a beautiful uh, uh, she so excited in even sharing that story and that's how grandparents are they are just naturally born storytellers like you and me and they have experienced a life uh, you know before us that's why i always like to share this particular uh, thing because this was taken about 4 years back but even then it it is so relevant for understanding the excitement in their voice when they are asked questions and the bond between a child and their grandparent this something so precious it's so beautiful and when we we what we don't realize is we don't ask we are sometimes as parents we are so overwhelmed we have to go to office we have excel sheets we have deadlines to meet we also have to look after our home maybe if we have help at home otherwise we have to cook we have to uh, host people and maybe if you have two children the elder one is having exams the younger one is having some teething troubles and so many things ask for help ask for help look around is there an aunt see that's why they say it takes an entire village to raise a child sometimes we think we have to do it all uh, up by ourselves it's not really we we can ask for help and children do listen children are 
you know if you tell them if you give them the respect you know what i uh, learned very recently i was interviewing a uh, the director of a montessori uh, training course and she told me janki it's not about just loving a child we all need to respect our children and we all need to ask the child what would you like to do have you ever asked our children it's like now is eating time now is drinking time now is sleeping time now is reading book time would you like to read a book if you are so excited the child will also show excitement if the child says i don't feel like reading a book today so be it don't force the child to do something that he or she you know these are little little things which really will because right now you're listening to the child and there is a story that he's telling you he's telling you i'm not interested right now just leave me alone if the child is looking out of the window and getting bored please let your child be bored because boredom leads to creativity and at that time don't create this imaginary story inside your head oh my god why is he just looking at is he okay why is he staring i think sometimes we as parents we overthink <coughs> so i not only raised a reader but i also i raised an author so dhwani uh, my daughter and i we uh, we co-authored a book called parties rasam which was released by uh, uh, karadi tales in 2021 december and uh, it went on to win the jarul book award and jarul book award national jarul book award is very special for us because it is voted by children so the children voted for our books and we can't ask for more and why i'm bringing her uh, you know example is that uh, she loved to read she loved to read she loved i think i fed her more stories than food you know constantly we used to talk about this and that and suddenly she would stop she would ask me what is a mixie what is a jar she would get fascinated with the sounds uh, that happen today she works in the food space she works for a very big coffee chain in bangalore so you see there are little little things that add up to their adulthood and just because they are doing something doesn't mean they have to just because they play with the uh, uh, what do i say a tea set doesn't mean they're going to land up in a coffee job but i'm i'm just saying sometimes there are signs let me share um let me share something uh with you let me continue to share my okay so now when we look at books of different the jungle storytelling is of course written by me i'm talking about stories of inclusivity now if you see on the left it's little vinayak who has a very very long trunk and he trips all the time and he falls and the story is how he actually gets uh, advice on how to walk without tripping without falling now the right side is my book from tulika my first book and it's about this ostrich ostru who uh, stammers and is unable to tell his story when the jungle has a storytelling festival and the whole story is who helps him out and how he gets to tell his story finally so you see through stories we are introducing simple things like inclusivity so when your child goes to school and when your child sees someone who not necessarily speaks like him behaves like him or her he understands he says ma i saw somebody like an ostru he could relate or i could i saw somebody who has a who has a problem like little vinay doesn't have a trunk but he has something else these are again very very important uh, subjects that need to be spoken to children about you know uh, a pair of twins here a pair of twins is again uh, published by uh, karadi tales it's a beautiful story of a relationship between a elephant calf and a little girl who's the daughter of a mahot lakshmi and sundari and this is entire thing sets is uh, set in mysore then there is this beautiful story of a boy who wanted to wear bangles but his dadi says no you can't wear bangles because girls are supposed to dress some way boys are supposed to dress some way but then he tells them that no there is a boy, girl who's completely having short hair and there is a boy who is wearing a big mala or wearing a tikka and there is a man a sadarji who is wearing a kada so how do you explain 
and then there is this little boy in Kashmir called Sadik who wants to stitch because his mother stitches these beautiful carpets. But the mother says, no, boys don't stitch. And how he finally gets to stitch uh, a beautiful carpet. And this, of course, is uh, Pati's Rasam. Pati's Rasam is the story about this little girl called Malli who thinks her mother, her party, is the best rasam maker. And uh, she keeps asking party, please, 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 can you share the recipe of um, rasam? And the party says, of course I will. But then one day, uh, party passes away. And see, uh, we don't say she dies and all that in the book. And uh, we say, but then one day, everything changed. So um, uh, everybody asked us, uh, why would you, one minute, let me show, that's my daughter and me. Uh, that's Dhani Sabesh. And I thought, when I'm showing Pati's Rasam, I must show who, the, who, who my co-author is. So we had a lot of people uh, saying that, you know, we, we also figured out, should we actually talk about death? But then we realized that death is a subject that not very, pe very many people, uh, you know, talk about. So both Dhani and I realized that we need to put this in, but we don't have to say it in so many words. So what did we do? We did, you know, uh, we did say with just, that's why the illustrations are so beautiful. If I may say so myself, Pallavi Jain and Vaijanti, they've done such a fabulous job of it. And we have been so overwhelmed by the love that we've received for this book. Because even today, when I was uh, recording a podcast, I mean, I was being interviewed, she said, I was able to tell my daughter the death of my cat of our cat and we were able to deal with it through this book. Sometimes, you know, you don't know how to tell a child, but remember your child at one, at a particular age is always ready. And the child will feel that empathy, will feel that, um, you know, that sadness or anything, but the child will get out. So there are many children who have read it and they said, uh, but my party is still alive. My party is there. And you know what they've done? They've gone, a seven-year-old Veera came to me and said, she went and she's making sure that she spends time with party every day. So children are very, very intelligent. You don't have to tell them anything. They are so innocent, they're so research, receptive, they understand. Why I spend so much time on parties, Rasam, is that I raised an author also. So Dhwani has been growing on a steady diet of books, stories, and we would make imaginary stories. We would, I would just say, and once upon a time, and she would suddenly make these, you know, really imaginary stories. And today, uh, all that has come together when she has um, co-authored. She said, Ma, I, I, when I told her the, the idea, the kind of, I said, I have this idea. She said, this reminds me so much of Pati, which is my mother who's no more. And she was amazing with her rasa. She said, I'd really like to write with you. So you see, you don't know where life takes you. And it is all about, you know, my parenting has always been about storytelling. So when Tanuja asked me, can you share this? And when Parent Tribe said, well, let's do this for the parent community, I said, yes. So <clears throat> I think basically what I'm trying to say is that there are multiple questions a multiple, sorry, multiple stories floating in your home, in your office, in your environment, in your uh, neighborhood. Go to the park. The child will see something and he'll ask you a question. She'll say, but what is that? I've never seen this bird. <laughs> you, if you don't know, say you don't know. And then go back, research and say, let's go and find, I think it's a kingfisher. And she says, what is a kingfisher? or what is a parrot, or what is uh, some other, or maybe, um, or even simple things like if you have a book, there is a book written by a friend of mine, say, an ant, uh, Sarah can fly. Sarah is the name of an ant. Now, you and I know that our ants cannot fly, but in the book, she flies. How does she fly? Because she had a dream. Sarah had a dream that she wants to fly like a bird. And all the, and the entire ant colony used to make fun of her saying, you can't fly, you're an ant. Stay where you are. But there was a people tree 
and one day when the wind was really blowing she found many people tree you know people leaves on the floor and she told her sister and her sister said all right okay you're so adamant you're so stubborn i will help you she quickly went on to the people leave okay she went on to the people leave and they went Hira pushed the both of them pushed the leaf first to the topmost branch of the tree, and slowly Hira made sure that Sarah went on to the leaf. And with the next gush of wind, <laughs> Sarah flew because the leaf went twirling and doing somersaults. And she said, "Wee, wee, wee! I'm flying. It's a simple thing." So you can't say no. Ants can't fly. Don't don't get logic into their mind. Yes, but this is a story, and this story is all about dreams. Your child might have a dream of I don't know. Your child might already be building an app, or uh, says I have a startup company. I need to do this. Your child might say I'm going to be the owner of a bakery, or I'm going to have a coffee shop, and the coffee shop is going to have this and that, and I will. And you are like. Okay, okay. All that you can do when you grow up. No, don't do that. Ask them more questions. Really, what coffee are you going to be serving there? And she'll say she'll pick up words from your own home. I'll give a cappuccino. Really, why did my child uh, uh, get cappuccino? That's because you've been. Uh, she's been with you when you order cappuccino, right? Or maybe you have a machine at home. Little, 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 little things. This. they just add up to it but for that you need to immerse yourself in the story you need to have the stories happen right in front of you and you have to believe in that see there is no right or wrong way to read a story each one of us are different and each one of us have their our own ways of you know explaining things to a child whether it's a you know a child may say what is this and you explain but this is a uh, a bottle in which uh, i keep water but why should you keep water in this it's available in plastic and then you say no but plastic is not good but you've been drinking on a plastic see it can just go on and on and on and on there is this there is absolutely no limit to what a child can ask what a child we have no clue and a child can surprise us in the most um what do i say um when you least expect it right uh, you you're going and you, you know you go to this uh, go to your friend's house and you say oh my child is very well fed and you know suddenly the child says but i'm hungry and you say but you stayed that's okay the child might like something and then the child goes and uh, points out to something and you say no no don't ask shush i'll tell you uh, later but if you made a promise keep that promise because the child will never forget So you see, these are little little things which actually tie it all together to make parenting such a wonderful journey. Remember, the child is listening only now. I'll get. I'll tell you a story. This is a real story. So when my daughter was growing up, um, I was working in an advertisement company, and you know, my production house. We we I used to keep some really crazy times, but I had the support of my mother-in-law and my parents. So. it was sorted and uh, she called me one day on from the landline to the landline uh, of my company and uh, i told her dhwani um next time you need to ask me whether i'm uh, free or not because uh, i mean i'm in the middle of something so she said all right so she i we used to have a pager then so she used to you know uh, dial the pager company and say send a message to my mother saying i want to speak to you dhwani So and then whenever I got free, we would speak. You know, every day three forty-five p.m. As soon as she came back from school, she had to send me this message because she had so many things to share with me. And some days, of course, I would immediately call her, and some days I would take my time. And now, the roles are reversed. She's working. I'm also working, but I'm like, can I? Can we speak? She says, sorry, I have a very busy day. Can you please text, or can you send me a voice note? So you see. when you when you have the uh, freedom to speak to your children and when they are listening do the most because it's all going to change when they grow up 
So you need to spend that much time immerse yourself and the best way to connect with them is through stories. There isn't a better way than, because it's the shortest distance, right? You talk and it's okay if they ask the same story 100 times. It's okay if they're not moving after the third page. They're stuck in the third page. It's okay. Their mind, you know, their young minds, they, it's going through somersaults. They, they're imagining things. They want to come back and they want to, they want to give a different ending to the story. Please. That's how their imagination will soar. That's how they, they understand the world through sounds, through languages, through books, through colors, through stories. So, Tanuja, do you want uh, to take questions now? I hope. Uh, yeah, so, I, I just like me, I think the audience is lost in your stories and we want more and more. <laughs> uh, can we have the audience, please? Rajiv, can you please promote them to the main uh, so that at least we can open the chat for all? Sure. Thank you so much. It was beautiful. And I was totally emotional at the end when you said, make the most mm. of your time. So, so true. They, they grow up very fast. Very fast. And time flies and how? Yeah. Too fast. Too fast. I can, can see, see Ashwin just smiling. smiling. <laughs> So we have close to about 60 participants now. Can you bring them all, Raji? Okay, I have, I mean, well, I'll answer this question from Varsha. Why kids want same uh, uh, story to listen? You know, um, so if this kid loves elephant, okay, he's going to love listening to Gajapati Kulapati every day. You, there are multiple books of Gajapati Kulapati. So you can say, or maybe he says, no, there must be some trait of, so you as a parent can ask the child, why do you want? And you will be surprised that the child will actually tell you that because Gajapati Kulapati has had a cold. He's upset that Gajapati Kulapati has a cold. Maybe he wants to give him a, a, a handkerchief, a towel, simple thing. And you've never asked him. You ask the question, why do you want? Dhwani had a set of uh, books called Tatty Ted. And she would just go with Tatty Ted everywhere. Everywhere. And I would like, can we just leave Tatty Ted? She said, no, they're my best friends. So then that's a zip. The best friends would always come along wherever we went. Whether vacation, whether we were going out on uh, uh, dinner, because they'll feel left out. This, these are her words. They will feel left out. They will feel very sad. Why my kid is more interested in story and troll them? <laughs> All right. So um, uh, if your child is uh, interested in demons and all, um, maybe it is time for you to introduce other kind of books. I'm telling you, now, just throw the books at home. Don't say, I've got this book you have to read. That's the worst thing you can do to a child. If you tell your child he or she has to do it, they will not. Just throw it and on their own, take them to a bookshop. Take them to a library. Let them pick up what they want, not what you want. Most of the time, we parents know, we want to read that book. So we will pick up that book. What if your child does not want to read that book? Your child actually wants to read something else. But yes, to take him away from demon, it's a phase, you know. It's, it's, it's really a, a phase for the children. They are, they are actually very happy to do many things. But uh, um, just like we all have a phase of uh, uh, liking a particular doll and then moving on to cars and then moving on to, my God, was I playing with all this? You, you might look at your own childhood in disbelief, you know. And the best way to, of course, engage in a lot of stories is your own report cards. God, if you've really done well, then it's okay. But it's a nice story to start. Especially <laughs> if your parents are around, uh, they can share the story of how well you did in school, in class. I hope I have uh, answered uh, some of the way. Any other questions? Please 
do uh, this Q and A. Oh. Okay, there's some other on Q and A. I'm not sure if they're going to be sharing the recording. My child has this habit, being with storybooks always till six years ago, then COVID hit, now he doesn't read his key. As a reader, it's hard for me to see his name ask me. Okay, so I understand this, uh, Sharmila, because uh, the children are also confused. We only told them no screen time, no screen time. And suddenly, um, when COVID came, uh, we all said, go back uh -huh. to screen, go back to screen. So the child is always confused. Now you need to keep a timetable. You say, I will allow screen time if you read a book. Now you have to, you have to, you have to really uh, enforce that. You know, it will take a little bit of cajoling and all. Because, and then, as I said, monkey see, monkey do. Sit with the book. Sit with the book and say, oh my God, make these sounds. Oh my God, really? <gasps> the monkey jumped out of this? And do all these drama and he will say, oh, he will definitely leave the screen and want to know because he's curious. He's also listening. He's multitasking. He's seeing his screen, but he's also listening. So please start reading books yourself, picking up books, going to the library. You know, we, we always take children out to the malls and, you know, to our uh, friends' places. Have a... Um, have a a kind of a session where, you know, all you parents, uh, you know, meet and you all share. I think that's where Pick a Book is doing such a wonderful job, you know, with adults. I don't know um, uh, the kind of work they do in schools, but, you know, it, the whole focus is to bring it back on books. And that's why I perform a lot from books. And then in the end, I perform first and only in the end, I show them the book. Because only in the end, they will, they would have imagined uh, a Gajapati Kulapati in a particular form. And then when I show them, oh, there is this big, uh, you know, uh, uh, sigh uh, saying that, oh my God, uh, this is how Gajapati Kulapati looked. And things like that. Yeah, there was some other question. So uh, we have Dilakshika. Uh, do you have anything to ask Dilakshika? Yeah. Please go ahead. Unmute please yourself. Please unmute yourself and please ask. Dilashika, if you could unmute yourself. Okay, not now. Uh, All no. right. Okay. 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 So the, see, uh, as far as uh, my list of books is concerned, it is more that you can uh, take. Uh, there are there are these multiple platforms. There are these librarians who keep sharing. One to three, you can, you know, the books that they like. Uh, on Instagram, there is Myth Auntie, M-Y-T-H-A-U-N-T-Y. She's a librarian. She's a resident librarian for many schools. And she really uh, does a fabulous job of curating books. Then there is Amma Today, who is the mother, uh, very influential, um, uh, influencer mother, who uh, keeps sharing, you know, that these are the books that I have read. So there are multiple mothers who share. I have not yet seen a father share that. Uh, but um, uh, yes, do you have a YouTube channel? Yes, I do. Uh, it's on Janaki uh, Sabesh. Um, most of the, what I did during COVID is present there. Um, I did a lot of online sessions for Kara Details. So you can find some very hilarious tales there. So you could please uh, feel free to just go subscribe and watch the videos. I collaborated with Little Trails, another parent community here in Chennai. So please do go ahead and uh, and please do comment. It feels nice eh, that somebody's watched it. Ah, Gigi, all I can say is please immerse yourself in the story. Just become Gajapati Kulapati. Make sounds, make this and that. Okay, her question is, you had our attention while narrating the story of Gajapati Kulapati. My son listened attentively. Thank you. Uh, how do we ensure kids have our attention while we narrate because kids' attention span is quite less post COVID. That is also something that we are using as an excuse. If you start immersing yourself in the story, if you start believing in the story and jumping and doing, you know, we are all conditioned that we are, as a parent, we should be very Absolutely. stiff and all. 
no just become the bandar just become the crocodile and suddenly if you say i am no crocodile now this is how i am showing crocodile you might show crocodile in some other way there is no good way or bad as long as the child understand that this is a crocodile so you know i mean you just have to um just use your imagination sometimes i think we we feel very shy don't your child is never going to judge you that's the beauty you know a child will never ever ever judge you the child is going to be there wanting to uh, know more and he'll be fascinated he'll be say amma or appa you are so good you are so amazing look at the way you made different sounds look at the way you you became the tiger sure yes kiruti you can unmute yourself ah uh, thank you so much ma'am the session was very much useful uh, yeah. i am a one of the montessori parent so okay. i'd like to ask one question like uh, we have read that like from 0 to 6 years the children we could not read the book which have which is so fantasy we should read only a real books is that true or uh, we can read the fantasy book or okay to the <laughs> i have i have also heard because when i am as a storyteller especially in montessori kids um i've been told because uh, they don't want uh, them to uh, because you see the animals really don't talk this is our mm-hmm. imagination so they want mm-hmm. to be that 0 to 3 they don't want to influence the child to say that mm-hmm. an elephant speaks like this but that's why you have storytelling sessions like mine where you know um, that's kind of permissible but that is why um, i think montessori says that keep it real let them understand the real world so i think you can you can check with your teacher the kind of books that you can read to your child uh, kirti because i don't want to go against what they say in school because then that will confuse your child okay you know really i want to because you have seen the <coughs> child i'm just asking whether they will get confused uh, with these because things. i uh, they they won't get confused as long as you are very clearly uh, telling them that this is a fantasy this is not happening in this world but you know it, it's uh, it's a very thin line because while we are mm. telling story we we want it to be real and then we are telling the child it is not real so it's very confusing for the child so mm-hmm. maybe um take some time before you get into that kind of uh, genre of stories take some okay. more time okay Our thank you doesn't allow us to show explain he just wants us to read normally he's 7 years old of course of course sure he, he, uh, whatever your child your child is the boss he, he he does not want you to do all this maybe the child does not want everybody does not have to like uh, uh loud sounds and all I, i'm telling you each child that's why your child is your it's amazing that he is able to communicate and tell you that this is how i want my story telling this is how i want you to read so do that don't go against his wishes because then he will not want to you to read a book which is uh, which will be sad do you take classes for upcoming storytellers uh, well i i really uh, do workshops uh, now and then i've done something called the magic of stories but yeah i need a small group at least a minimum of 10 to do this so if there's somebody who is going to organize it i'm always ready uh what kind of books is good for a child you will have to figure it out yourself uh, all books are good but you will have to go through the every uh, book sh- store every website has it um you know according to age all you need to do is just go and uh, ask the person there they they are the best people if you're going into a bookstore if you're visiting a website like a tulika or a katha or a, a pratham or uh, kare details it's all given it clearly says 1 to 3 3 to 5 emerging readers uh, you know uh, and then mid level then high level so that way you can figure out and ask the child what kind of story would you like to read he says i want something about rocket then see if there is a story where a child is talking about a rocket you know, things like that all uh, websites are very 
easy to navigate. Thank you so much for being such a wonderful audience today. I think uh, we had uh, a I lot of questions. I was about to for... say that you have that charm and we are all hooked to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, we want it more and more, but I think we have to wrap it up in five minutes. So please, audience, come up with your questions. We have five more minutes. Our and website is I all Kara Details. Okay, Kara Details, website, uh, Tulika, website. Pratham, Story Weaver, these are the uh, some of the sites that you can visit. Just, just type this and you will get, yeah. Okay, so thank you so much for organizing. Thank you, Tanuja. Is somebody? Pleasure is entirely mine. Thank you so much, all of you for your time and being here. Yes. So have you taken a screenshot or something? You've already taken or you can always take it. We later. have recorded. Uh, can uh, you yeah. all like... I don't think they the will... Videos uh, are switched off. So can we all request, please? Uh, it's is it possible to switch on the video? I know it's it's a Saturday evening. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Okay, so there are some, okay. There is no correct age limit there for listening no to a story. Limit. Yeah, Hi. stories are universal. Everybody should listen to a story. My mother-in-law listens even now. Of course, age she, is she, timeless. Yeah, age, yeah, timeless. Stories are, otherwise, Pony and Selvan that got released. So many people have read the book, but everybody wanted to see the movie because everybody had read the book, right? Absolutely. So, I mean, yeah, I think uh, um, uh, one last question. Do you think it's better to shift the content yes. once? A That's okay. You can shift the content. It's all uh, children specific. The moment you know a child is getting a little bored, I think that time you just shift to another. Or the child will come back to this story much, much later. So every child is unique, right? Like our fingers, none of them are the same. It's, it's like that. But be excited about sharing stories. I know you'll have your good days and bad days. You say, I can't be so excited like you every day. Yeah, I'm also not excited every day. But uh, if there are days when you're feeling bad, you tell the child, today you read on your own. Tomorrow, Amma or Appa will come and read. So I'll be in a better mood. I have something. You know, we should be transparent to our children. I have homework. Just like you have homework, I have homework of office. You know, the, the child will understand. They'll come and empathize with you. You finished your homework. Boss came, boss mama told you. You also have teacher. You know, amazing. I used to be very transparent with my daughter. Some days I wouldn't even come back from office. I and mean, that's the kind of job I had. And she will say, uh, everything okay? Boss mama scolded you? No, nobody scolded. <laughs> yeah, these kind of things, you know. They, because at their uh, age, that's how they comprehend what is happening in Amma's life. So beautiful. All right, then. Before we... Okay. we call it a day. Thank you so much, all of you joining. And of course, you know, I think I... I have no words to thank you, Janke ji. We look forward to our next session very, very soon. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you all. Thank have you so much. Evening. Yeah. Have a great Sunday. Bye.